previously. Centuries, man has feared things that go bump in the night. That is not about to change now. Some of the fastest names in the game face a very scary prospect. That of a three-time defending champion out in front with time running out. As the chase heads for the home track, expect some high-octane southern hospitality. So dig in, buckle up, and make your move. Because before you know it, it'll be lights out on your shot at the title. With his win last week, moving him to the top of the standings, Jimmy Johnson has made himself the odds-are champion to many fans for this year, even some of his competitors. But if Jimmy's the would-be hero, who's ready to play the villain? Who's ready to step up and deny Johnson that place in history by winning tonight and taking that momentum for his own? There are a lot of good candidates. There's one, Juan Pablo Montoya. But in racing, we know words mean little. It's all about making it happen on the track. Who's going to get it done? Could Tony Stewart be the guy? Tony starting tonight in fifth position and certainly a threat to win this championship in the remaining six events. So race number five in the 10 race chase for the Sprint Cup about to get underway here at the home track of many of the drivers and teams. Let's go trackside and get the command. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome your co-grand marshals, Brian France, Teresa Earnhardt, Richard Petty, and Junior Johnson. Drivers, start, start your, your engine. engine. Bring him up, bring him up. Rack it up. Uh, it looks like the majority of it's gonna go south, Marcus. Kinda hard to tell what it's doing now, but it looks like it's gonna go south. Four hundred two shin. Yeah, I got you loud and clear. Well, good day, boys. There's a part of the beginning and see what happens. So as the cars warm on this very chilly Saturday night, we talked about the neighbor factor tonight and how this NASCAR industry is all pretty much centered around Charlotte. Let's head upstairs to three men who grew up in North Carolina as neighbors and now stand side by side ready to call the race. Dale Jarrett, Andy Petrie, and Dr. Jerry Punch. Gentlemen. Thank you very much, Alan. Hello, everyone. Glad to have you with us here on a chilly night in the Carolinas. You know, on Thursday night, folks, when Jimmy Johnson sailed his Chevy into turn one at 200 miles per hour and averaged 192 miles an hour in qualifying, this place officially became the fastest track in all of NASCAR this year. Yeah, even faster than Daytona or Talladega. And guys, 12 cars qualified at over 190 miles per hour. How does all that speed translate into what we're going to see here tonight? Well, they, you, like you said, this is faster than any place we've been this year, faster than those two super speedways, Daytona and Talladega, and it is a lot smaller. It's a lot narrower. It's one mile shorter than both of those racetracks. So these drivers, when they talk about being on the edge, and we've heard a lot of them talk about it this week, I mean, they are literally on the edge, and we've seen it all week long that these high speeds have created a lot of great action. Yeah, the drivers that I've talked to, to a man, has said that now this racetrack with this car, this tire, and these temperatures have surpassed the Atlanta Motor Speedway as the place that you feel speed the most and it's not nearly as wide as that racetrack and some others they have to race on they expect great racing here tonight we expect that and everyone that i talked to also said watch these restarts they're going to be exciting after last week's win at california jimmy johnson assumed the points lead for the first time this year and some believe he's well on his way to a fourth consecutive nascar championship but there are some in the garage area who believe that the sentimental favorite mark martin and some others are going to keep that from happening what do you think well, Mark and Jimmy are both favorites for this championship, but one dangerous guy in here is Juan Pablo Montoya. I'm telling you, this guy is fast every week. He's got an average finish so far in the chase of 
five, so he's fast enough to win these races. And if I'm Jimmy and Mark, I'm gonna give this guy a little extra room because I'm telling you, man, he could be dangerous. Yeah, but I'm gonna talk to you about a guy that maybe thinks that he might deserve a little more respect here. He's a four-time champion. He's won five times at this racetrack. He spent his second the last two weeks. Jeff Gordon thinks that he's got his team going in the right direction. All he needs is a little slip up by those other guys, and he's gonna be right in the middle of this championship battle. You know, if our in-race reporter wins this race tonight, he will become the first Tasmanian ever to win at Lowe's Motor Speedway. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the way to introduce our in-race reporter, driving that 47 car, the Bush Beans Toyota, starting back in 13th position. Let's visit with Marcus Ambrose. Hey, Marcus, Del Jarrett with ESPN. You have a copy? Marcus, Del Jarrett with ESPN. You have a copy? Yes, I got you. Hey, Marcus, thanks for doing this tonight, and uh, we're going to get right to our mailbag. And Matt from Canberra, Australia, was watching qualifying the other night, and his question comes from that. You said after qualifying that the track took your breath away. What is the track like with the car and race setup and door-to-door -door with other drivers? No, the track's just so fast here. It's got a lot of grip. Good you put a great tire, and we've got really cool conditions. There's a lot of horsepower, a lot of track grip, and... Anything under 29 seconds around a mile and a half speedway, you know you're alive, I can tell you that. Hey Marcus, you've had a very impressive first season. We've seen improvement on a week-to-week -week basis with your race team and your driving uh, abilities. What do you think, in your opinion, that you and your team need to do? Where do you need to make improvements to get that next step taken to where you're in the top 10 on a weekly basis? Yeah, thanks. We've had a great season. We don't want it to finish. We're getting better and better each week. I think the biggest uh, focus point for us is just not to change anything. Just keep doing the same thing. As I get more experience, as I gel better with my team, we're just going to keep doing better and better. I can taste those top ten, but we just can't panic and can't get too aggressive. It's just going to let it come to us naturally. Marcus, we watched you in the final practice yesterday. Your car looked extremely fast. Was it pretty much where you wanted it, or did you make any changes from that time? It's fast, no doubt about it, but um, I'm struggling a little bit on the longer run getting tight. It just seems to be as the heat builds up uh, on the right front tyre, it, it, it just can't take it. Good cars can survive 20, 25 laps. For us, we were probably about 12 to 15 laps where we started to get too tight. So we made some adjustments overnight. Hopefully they're the right ones and we'll get going here early and have good pace. All right, Marcos, thanks for talking with us tonight. Have a great night. Now Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Frankie Kerr. Hey, Frankie, Andy Petrie in the booth, you got us? Yeah, I got you, bud. Hey, Frankie, uh, we're, you know, experiencing a lot of co a lot cooler weather here in Charlotte than we ever have by running this race a, a week or two later than normal. What kind of challenges uh, does it make for the car with these cold temperatures? Uh, that's, uh, you know, it's going to put a lot of strain on the motors. Being, um, you know, in the cool air, and they're going to make a lot of horsepower, you know, and... The cars are going to go so fast, you know, being the track speeds up with the good, good conditions, um, you know, we have a lot more downforce than expected, you know, so we got to worry about hitting the ground. Uh, we're very little opening on our tape uh, just to try to get the motor to run warm enough. And, um, you know, it's, it's a different puzzle, you know, um, with this cool temperatures. Well, okay, good luck tonight, Frank. We really appreciate you talking to us and uh, have a good race. Thank you. Uh, so far, we're staying in Victor Lane at the end of this. Well, aside from Marcus Ambrose's team, we'll have onboard cameras in seven of the cars, including five Chase Contenders cars. Casey Kane will ride along with him. He's a three-time Charlotte winner. And, of course, Jimmy Johnson, our points leader and pole sitter. And how about some Transformers cars? They hope to be able to transform their Chevys into winners tonight. Five-time winner here, Jeff Gordon in the Megatron colors. He's the leader of the Decepticons. And Ryan Newman painted as Optimus Prime. He's the leader of the peace-loving Autobots. We are just moments away from the start of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series action here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. It is the NASCAR Banking 500 only from Bank of America. This broadcast is available in Spanish by activating your SAP button presented by ESPN Deportes. Take a look at